My name is Craig Collinson. In December 2007, I began filming a documentary about the former world champion boxer Scott Harrison and his comeback to the ring after a two-year absence. I'd hoped to make a film charting the greatest comeback in Scottish sporting history, but instead, over the course of the next year, I would watch a fighting machine gradually self-destruct. They want me to just go and retire somewhere. That's basically what they want me to do. I mean, fucking, it's an absolute... It's turning into a pure fucking circus. It's a, it's a total joke. This is the inside story of Scott Harrison's attempted return to professional boxing. It's a tale full of twists and turns. One that ultimately would see Scott Harrison not back in the ring, but behind bars. It's December 2007, and I first meet Scott Harrison as he officially announces to the press that he will return to the ring. This is Scott Harrison, official comeback. So, uh, mark my words. I'm not a boxing expert, but like most people, I know that Scott is Scotland's most successful boxer, a two-time world title holder, but that problems with alcohol, drugs and the law stalled his career just as he was on the verge of becoming one of the sport's all-time greats. I also know there must be a person behind all the tabloid headlines, and I want to find out who that is. My first day's filming is at the start of a 10-week training schedule for a warm-up fight planned in March. I read that Scott can be temperamental, but he's keen to get across that his past is behind him and that he's totally committed to getting his title back. I'm waiting for my third world title. I mean, everybody knows what I've been through uh, since the past two years. I'm not fought in about two years, so this is uh, this is me going to... I'll definitely win the world title again. I think a lot of people forget, you know, the 6,000 fans that used to turn up and support me. I think uh, a lot of people actually forget, you know, the, all the genuine world title fights I used to put on. When you see me right now, right? You see, you see right now, you see me day one. This is going to be a few few months, this, uh, this documentary. So you'll see me in ten weeks' time, then you can you can see the difference for yourself. I mean, it's sort of night and day, basically. I mean, I'm dropping two stone in weight. The way you see me punching the bags today is going to be totally different than it's going to be like ten weeks' time. You've got to see a pure animal. Scott's certainly taking his training seriously. Six days a week, he's up at dawn for a five-mile uphill run, followed by a two-hour session in the gym and then a further workout at night. Scott's dad, Peter, who coached his son to the world title, is back training him again and making sure he stays on course. In Scott's mind, I know, like, uh, he's preparing for a fight. He's getting his life back in order again. He's, 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 he's getting his fight. I mean, all he talks about is a third world title. You know, that's all he's wanting, that's a third world title. But as Scott gets into the rhythm of this gruelling regime, I discover there might be a problem. Scott doesn't actually have a licence to box. He had it suspended a year ago by the Boxing Board of Control for cancelling a fight at the last minute. Without a boxing licence, Scott can't legally step back into the ring. Frozen, cold again, freezing. <laughs> but he's begun training for a fight in the hope that it might be reinstated before March and seems optimistic that it's just a formality. Oh, it all depends on the board, really, doesn't it? It all depends uh, if the board are going to play the game. You know what I mean? Gives your licence back. Because... Yeah, when, when, when do you expect to hear? When, when, when do you think... Well, I'm, I'm expecting a letter through the door today. Uh, hopefully tell me that I should attend a meeting in the next month. But, I don't know, the postman's not turned up yet, so I need to wait and see. <laughs> so, a couple of days will tell. That's why I'm going up here, early bells, and going to go run up this, this hill here, and uh, get back to fighting in, in March. Basically, what I'm trying to do is get my life back on track. I mean, I'm training hard, and I feel my body fit. That's three miles, Scott. Can I just say, 
right way beyond the gear and put a, a black mark through and just say, that's Scott Harrison, he's not getting a licence back again. He did something right, he's, he's going to get another chance, isn't he? Scott seems genuinely focused to me and obviously thinks he's putting in the effort to make up for the mistakes he's made. But I'm surprised to learn that he's a regular church goer and that religious faith is a driving force in his life. I go to chapel on a Sunday and uh, I say my prayers. Uh, and that's, that's up to me. Uh, end of the day, each to their own, know what I mean? If I want to go to chapel on a Sunday, I go to chapel on a Sunday, you know? Does it give you focus? Definitely, definitely. Gives you more confidence as well. Once you get into the fight, I, I believe in him. Although he keeps it very much to himself, I can see a very different Scott Harrison to the fighting machine I'd seen in the ring. You're definitely fitter than you've been for a while now, right. aren't you? You've had a long, hard road, and he's yeah. learned a lot about himself and about other people and what to do with that. Well, the, the, the church has always been willing to welcome back someone who's made a fool of himself, who's going to repent and come back, and I think this yeah. is it. You've always been faithful to the church. Yeah. Yeah. But if you get this... Um, well, I've got a license back, that's me, I'm off and running. Yeah, well. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'll be off and running. That's <laughs> that's yeah. Finding out about Scott's religious convictions like this, I realise that there is more to him than just Harrison, the troubled ex-champ. But boxing is pretty much all he talks about, and as I discover looking into his past, all he knows. Boxing has been a part of Scott's life for as long as he can remember. His grandfather boxed for the British Navy. His uncles were boxers and his dad was a Scottish champion who went on to become a successful coach. As his father proudly recalls, boxing is in Scott's blood. Scott was actually the four-year-old, and Scott walks over to a group of five or six boys, and the boy who is bullying everybody in the street walks up to Scott and goes, like that. That was the first thing he'd done to him. And Scott just hit him with a right hand right on the chin. Uh, he said, uh, I want to take up the boxing. So I said, if you've got to take it up, you have to be really serious about it. From the age of 15, Scott devoted his life to boxing. That, that was uh, the first amateur fight I had. I went in there and stopped him two rounds. He was covered in blood. Was, he must have broke his nose or something, I don't know. But that, that's when I knew I was, I was good at it. I could, I could feel the power I had in him. Scott told me later that as a teenager he'd missed birthday parties and hanging out with friends so that he could keep training. And it paid off. By his early 20s, he was the British and Commonwealth champion, and the world title was within his grasp. That was a huge step up, me fighting for the world title. Shook on who I was fighting, he was, a, he was a big left hooker. He threw big left hooks, he was small, he'd come for the cr uh, crouch and come up with the big left hooks. He'd knock every bit. Everybody out with this uh, left hook. So he was the guy that we get told, avoid Shackon, don't fight Shackon. But sometimes you're forced into things, and, uh, and that, was, that was the chance that Scott had for a world title fight. So he weighed up the chances and, and he took it and, it, and uh, he won it. And the first ever featherweight champion from Scotland. It was obvious to me that he'd been driven and Scott's talent took him to the top of the world at just 25 years old. Turning world champ coincided with him becoming a dad, and listening to him talk about it, it was clear that fatherhood had intensified his focus still further. Five years on, and he was still hungry for success. Once you've got your kids, it's not really all about yourself. It's about, you know, fighting for your family. You know, your kids, I've got two kids, uh, a wee boy, a six-year-old, uh, we last uh, two-year-old as well. So basically the money I make will basically be going, going to them in their future. But in boxing terms, there's a time limit to this future that Scott is talking about. He is 30 years old, getting to be past his prime as a boxer. He's been out of the ring for two years. It's not going to be as easy for him to get into shape as it had been before. He explains to me that to return to the ring, he has to lose nearly two stones in weight and readily admits that, for a man in his 30s, it's going to be hell. I'm sweating maybe eight pounds in one training session. 
few times up with three. Uh, your morning training session, after running at night, them losing air a stone a day. They're putting a stone back on with fluids. So you think how much draining your body goes through with it? 